In this lesson, we're stepping it up a notch and exploring the world of Slack apps. By diving into Slack apps, we'll not only learn about Slack, but we'll also learn essential skills that will help us navigate more complex software use cases. Through this lesson, we'll learn how to incorporate third-party APIs and functionality, read developer documentation, and work with different software packages. All essential skills so we can build prompts to create all sorts of software solutions. Now with that overview of the skills that we'll learn out of the way, let's get back to the task at hand. We're going to build a Slack app. For those of you who might not be familiar with Slack, it is a tool for team communication and collaboration. With Slack, you can share files, have direct chats, and organize conversations into channels. But outside of it being a cool tool in its own right, one of the really exciting things about Slack is it is extendable, meaning you can bring in your favorite tools and services with something called apps and create and customize your own workflows around the platform. You can think of apps like little upgrades or add-ons for Slack. Apps can do things like add a poll for quick team decisions or even set up meetings without the back and forth. And more broadly, if you're working with different software tools, learning how to customize those tools by adding add-ons and extensions can help improve your own workflows. The type of app we're building is called a bot, which is a special type of Slack app designed to interact with users via conversation. And our bot is going to help with daily stand-ups. If you're wondering what a stand-up is, it is a quick daily meeting where team members share what they're working on and any roadblocks they might be facing. Our bot will join in on Slack channels and gently remind everyone to share their updates. In addition to this, team members will be able to send their updates directly to the bot and I'll pass the message along to the right channels. To get started and follow along with me, you're going to need a free Slack account. So pause here and get that set up if you haven't already. In the next section, we're gonna dive into Slack's developer docs. This is where we're gonna get all the know-how and contacts to plan our project and later create prompts for our AI. So let's get to it. Before we dive into building our bot, we're going to want to gain a little bit of context from Slack's developer documentation. Simply put, developer documentation is kind of like a detailed guidebook that tells you how to build and customize software. Because remember, the more context we have, the better prompts we can write. This is especially important when an app will use tools created by other people called third-party tools or follow certain blueprints known as frameworks. AI is smart, but it doesn't automatically know the latest updates so it's important to be able to read documentation so we can check things out ourselves. So right now, I'm currently on Slack's documentation, and if you aren't, open up Slack's documentation, go to api.slack.com slash docs. The first tab here, the first place that we land, is an overview of Slack's platform. When getting acquainted with documentation, starting with any platform overviews or documentation overviews will give us a nice idea of where to focus our attention. So starting with the platform overview, we've got two paths here, workflow automations and a non-workflow Slack apps. First thing I notice is this call out on the bottom, this blue bar. Workflow automations are paid and non-workflow Slack apps are not paid, so we're Gonna go with the free route for our app, focusing on non-workflow apps. For these, we'll get to know about something called APIs and SDKs, which is a concept you'll encounter often in software development. Think of an API, which is short for application programming interface, as a waiter taking your order and telling the kitchen what to cook up. It is a go-between for our app to talk to other apps or services. So in the context of Slack, an API will allow our app to talk to our Slack workspace. Then we have an SDK, which is short for Software Development Kit. It is like the whole pantry of ingredients, recipes, and tools that a chef might use to make cooking easier and faster. It includes everything a developer needs to build their own apps. So since we've decided to go with the non-workflow Slack apps, let's click into that and explore the documentation further. All right, another thing I notice here is another call out. We have a quick start guide. In the context of developer documentation, a quick start is a concise guide really designed to get you up and running with a tool. 
It usually includes the essential steps, so if you're reviewing documentation, look for any overviews, look for any quick starts. It can quickly give you an understand of how to work with the tool or platform. So we'll come to this quick start later. Let's start reviewing this more specific overview. As we go through, we have an overview of some features of the platform. Another thing that's helpful to do when reading documentation is to look at any headings or navigation. These elements can quickly give us an idea of what's to come on the page that we're on. So as we go through, I see this term surfaces. These are the places in Slack where our bot will show up and interact with users. We've got app home, which is going to be our bot's main hangout, modals for when we need more detailed info from our users, and messages to send updates or info back and forth. For our daily stand-up bot, we're likely going to use all of these surfaces. Next up is interactivity. Basically, it's how the bot and users will talk to each other through clicks and commands. And as we keep scrolling, let's see, we come across APIs. We have the events API, which is our bot's ears for listening to what's happening in Slack. The web API, conversations API, which is how we'll be able to interact with other members. We also have something called socket mode which is a simpler way to connect our bot without needing to expose a static HTTP endpoint to receive payloads. Which, that can sound quite complicated, but in layman's terms, basically what this means is you don't have to create a fixed spot on the internet to collect information sent from other places. Then we hit the tools and SDKs section. We have bolt SDKs. Slack SDKs. Remember, SDKs are a set of tools on top of APIs that let developers build apps faster. It looks like Bolt includes some shortcuts, and you can use Slack SDKs if you prefer to work with the foundations yourself. For our app, we'll likely go with Bolt. They also have a JavaScript SDK, so that should work great for our use cases, should work great in Replit. Then we have some other development tools in this section. Something called a block kit. So block kit is Slack's visual framework. So instead of us spending a ton of time on design and creating pop-ups, we can use Slack's ready-made elements. And they have a block kit builder. We'll likely not use it, but if we wanted to prototype how certain elements looked like in a visual interface, we could use that. We wouldn't even have to go to Replit first or Code first to kind of prototype what things look like. All right. And that's it for the main overview of the non-workflow Slack apps that we got to from our platform overview. We can note some main concepts that we'll want to bookmark and save that we can reference later as we're building our prompts in our app. And these are Bolt SDK, Block Kit, Messages, Modals, App Home, Socket Mode, and the APIs, Events, Web, Conversations. With this understanding, let's hop on over to the Quick Start and check out the setup steps. So let's scroll back up here to the quick start. So main steps we need in order to build a Slack app, we have, we need to create the app within the Slack platform, request scopes. So in the context of development, scopes are basically the permissions that your app has. So for security purposes, a lot of times you'll need to define exactly what your app has access to, especially when you're building apps for other platforms. And you can do that with scopes. Then we'll install and authorize the app into our workspace. This is going to be really helpful as we test our app so we can have it kind of live in a real environment. We've got configuring it for event listening. 
And the last piece is around sending a message with something called a webhook. So webhooks are another important concept within software development. A webhook is like a doorbell for websites or apps. When something happens in one app, it rings the doorbell of another app to let it know something new has occurred. This last step, and it's common in quick starts, they'll have one part that's set up and then another part that's a little bit of implementation. This last step is more implementation and it's more of a verify that our app is up and running step. For our particular daily stand-up bot, we don't necessarily need that, so we can ignore that. But with that, we have a general understanding of the steps involved for building a Slack app, particularly setting it up. And that's all we need from the documentation at this stage. Before we move on, let's do a quick recap of what we've learned about navigating developer documentation. First, we're always going to want to start with any bird, bird eye views. Look for a quick overview, introductions. This includes any quick starts. Then... Check out headings, navigation. These elements will guide you through the documentation and let you know where you might want to focus your attention to dive deeper. And then especially for writing prompts, keep an eye out for any developer tools. This is where you'll find the specific technologies and techniques you want to use to build your software. And we're going to give all of those technologies and techniques to our AI when we're creating our prompts. And there you have it. Remember, for this exercise, our goal is not necessarily to become an expert in the documentation of the platform that we're building. It's really just to get enough context so we can write good prompts. We just need an introductory understanding of what's required. And as we build, we can always revisit the documentation. If we encounter any errors, we can always come back and dive deeper. So with this quick lay of the land and Slack's documentation done, let's go ahead and start planning our project. This video is brought to you by No Code MBA. If you like this free preview of our Coding with AI course, check the link in the description to view the full course and everything that is included. Let's get back to the video. Now that we've laid down the basics of the documentation, let's delve into planning our Slack bot. Remember, thoughtful planning before diving into development can really save time and effort down the line. As we outline our high-level project plan, will slightly modify the structure from the project plan that we use when building our landing page. Instead of having a content section, we'll add a section in our project plan for features and functionality. So our project plan structure will be as followed. Purpose and goals, features and functionality, design, and technical considerations. Now let's dive into the project plan starting with purpose and goals. I have a fleshed out version here so we can review it together and this asset will be made available to you as well. Starting with the purpose and goals, our project's main purpose is to hold daily standups. And broadly, our goal is to master working with APIs and AI, even without being super technical. Now, for features and functionality, we want our bot to send a daily reminder message, be able to accept stand-up updates from within the app home, and then post those updates to all channels that include both the submitting member and the bot. Next up here is design. We'll ensure a consistent user interface by using Slack's block kit. Specifically, we'll use the bolt block kit for designing the modal where users will input their standup details and for the button that triggers the standup submission from within the app home. Finally, we'll tackle the technical considerations. We learned about APIs and SDKs, but before we dive deeper, there's one more key concept to understand, and those are software packages. Software packages are pre-written codes or functions that developers can include in their projects to add specific functionalities without starting from scratch. They're kind of like app features you can download and install in your project, and they save time and effort. Now with our grasp on APIs, SDKs, and software packages, we're better equipped to understand the tech stack required for our Slack bot. To identify all the necessary technologies for achieving our goals, we're going to get some help from ChatGPT. So I'm going to copy the features and functionality here. And go ahead and open up ChatGPT. As a reminder, during this course, 
the free model is going to be sufficient for our purposes. And we're going to craft a prompt to give us some insight into what technology considerations we might have. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, starting with a declaration here, we're going to provide a bulleted list of the packages, tools, and APIs I should use to build a Slack bot. Then a little bit of context of what we are building and kind of what tools we've already identified. Then we'll also use a separator to add in the functionality. And we can run this prompt. So here's the output, and your output might vary. Based on the output, we've got Slack Bolt's JavaScript SDK, Blockkit, Node.js. That's going to be helpful for us to identify which framework to use when we are in Replit, like which template to start with. A cron job scheduler. So this suggests Node cron. That sounds great. Yours might suggest something different, but we'll go with Node cron. Slack API and Replit. So here's the, a summary. And if we go back to our technical considerations, it's kind of already filled out for us here. So we'll use Slack APIs, Bolt JavaScript SDK, Replit, Node Cron for scheduling, and then also socket mode, which was not mentioned here, but we saw that in the documentation, socket mode is going to be what's going to enable us to receive events without having to set up our own servers. We're not going to do that today. And that's a wrap. In the next section, we'll begin the hands-on work of building our Slack bot, applying all the insights and tools we've mapped out to create our prompts. Now that we have planned our project, let's create a prompt to get a sense of what steps we need to do. It's going to be very similar to the prompt we created when we were defining steps during the landing page project. Let's open up that resource on our landing page prompt planning. I have it up right here. Refer to the resources if you don't have it open. And we're just going to copy this first prompt and change it slightly. So let's copy this first prompt that we used from the landing page project, and we're going to change it slightly. So we're still going to start with create a step-by-step -step list. It has some extra space in here so we can... And instead of a mobile responsive landing page, it's going to be... Instead of all of this... Uh, So we give it some more context about what exactly we are building here. And then we're going to feed in the requirements. So we have the expected output format already from our previous prompt. And requirements. And we're going to go back to our project plan, copy these features and functionality. Just copy that and paste it into requirements. So a little one of these looks pretty okay. 
Let's run it, see what we get as an output. So it looks like broadly here, we're gonna have to set up our Slack app. So we'll need to go into the Slack API dashboard, install the app to our workspace, set up Bolt in Replit, initialize it, and then create our functions. Daily reminder, stand-up update, submission, subscribing to events, testing, deploying. Okay, so that sounds like a pretty good list of tasks to give us some understanding of the roadmap ahead. So let's now open up Replit. So let's go over to Replit. Replit.com. And we're gonna create a new REPL. We're gonna use the Node.js REPLit. If you remember from the last section when we were planning our project and we were thinking of technological, technological considerations, we had Node.js, that's what we're gonna be using. So can you use that? We'll call this NC MBA Slackbot. And we will create our REPL just to have that handy because we know all of the code that we create, it's gonna go inside this REPL, inside our REPLit. All right, looks good. Next up, we'll create our Slack app. So let's go to slack.com slash apps. We'll go to build our apps. and then create a new app. We'll do from scratch here, and we'll call this NCBA Daily Stand Up for the title. You can name it whatever you desire for the workspace. You'll wanna, again, make sure you have a workspace. Sign up for one. A free one is more than sufficient. And another important, really important note here, if you are following along, make sure it's a workspace that you don't mind sending test messages to because we are actually going to be, our bot will send some messages as we develop. So if it's a workspace that you don't want to send messages to, then create another one where you do feel comfortable doing that. Next, we're going to create our app. We will let that create. Oh, looks like there's some server errors, so let's just. Great, now we are in our app dashboard and we can explore a little bit here. We've landed first on the basic information. We've got some features and functionality. A shout out to socket mode. If you remember, socket mode is something that we're going to be employing here so we don't have to set up our own servers. We're not gonna use it. We're just using a local internal app. We're not building an app in this section to distribute to the app marketplace. If we did, we could set up a server. And then we've got webhooks, components, commands, bots. So I think the next thing we want to do here, some credentials, we'll do stuff with that as we create our app. Tokens. Let's go ahead and enable socket mode because we know we're going to need that. So we're going to click enable socket mode. We can call this Slack socket mode. All right. We see that we need to give it a name. We just did that. And we also have this thing here called scopes. We have one scope, connections, right? So if you're not familiar, scopes specify the level of access we're requesting for our app. They're like permissions we set to tell Slack exactly what our app can and can't do within the workspace. And it's a common paradigm within software development. So by setting scopes, we ensure our app only accesses the data it needs which is great for security and user trust. In the case of our socket mode, default scope, the connection's right, that's gonna be good enough for us for now. And the cool thing about iterating, building, 
if we need more scopes, our app will very much tell us, and we can always come back to this dashboard to modify things later. So let's click Generate. Cool, we've got our token. We want to keep this safe. So let's copy this token and go back into Replit. Let's go back into Replit here. So I will move myself. In Replit, we have this thing called Secrets. We have a nice tab here, Secrets. So Secrets are environment variables, which are another crucial aspect of software development. They keep sensitive information like API keys, tokens, or database passwords private by storing them separately from your source code. So in order for us to run this Slack app, we're going to have to give it some credentials so they know who it's for, what workspace, what configurations, what access rights they have, but especially with things like API keys, database passwords, you do not want to put them directly in your code. You want to make sure that you keep those secret because if someone else grabs it, they can take actions on your behalf. So let's go ahead and create a secret. We're going to click new secret and we're going to call this secret Slack app token. I'm going to paste the value here. Cool. First secret is added. We can go back to our Slack tab, our API dashboard here. This is done. We don't need that anymore. We've enabled socket mode. You know, another thing that we need here is the app home. So let's go to the app home, see what's over here. So we've got, we can't enable the tabs yet, messages, home tab. That's because we have to, again, assign another scope. So we need to at least have a bot token. So I'm gonna review the scopes to add. See, because we don't have any permissions yet, we haven't defined what scopes, what permissions our app should have. We can't even install the app yet to our workspace. So we've got scopes. We have two kinds of scopes, bot top token scopes, scopes that govern what your app can access and user token scopes. They access user data and act on behalf of users that authorize them. So we don't really need to act on behalf of users. So we can just, let's just keep this at the, the bot token. And then we also have this thing called OAuth. And just for information's sake, OAuth is a, a type of authentication with a, a fancy, which is basically a really fancy way of saying it's a way to sign into an app. So let's, let's uh, Slack know like who is this person? Like who, whose app is this? And so. We can actually create a prompt for our chat GPT to get some ideas of what scopes we might need. So let's, let's do this for some brainstorming. Let's go over here. Start our prompt for a Slack bot. What bot token scopes? And we'll throw in user token scopes to get some ideas. I. So, boo, boo, boo. so we have some functionality. Let's, we're just going to paste this functionality from our project plan. Features and functionality. Gonna take it. We're going to put it in there. I'll just little pieces. All right. Send that over. All right, so we're using node cron for the reminders, not Slack's built-in reminder functionality, so we can probably be good with that. We've got this app home read, write, chat, write, chat, write, chat, write, customize. So let's go in here and start adding some tokens. 
So we definitely are going to need chat right. I don't think we need a customized user, but we can add that. We want to also write chat right public. Let's see, send messages. So we are not going to use chat right public. We don't want, we only, we want this to be secure. So only where the app has been added can we send messages. So we don't need this chat right public. Might need something with channels, like to be able to join channels. Want to read channels. See, what else do we have about channels? We don't need to manage them. Groups are basically private channels, so we want to read groups, write groups. We don't need user groups. We don't need to invite members, maybe history. Even channels history, that might be good. Just viewing content. Then for our user token scopes, there's something around the, let's see, we have an app home, that might be an old scope, but we can still say write. As we go, yep. Yeah. yeah, chat right. Well, maybe do that. We don't necessarily want our user data. Channels read, read the user data. Maybe groups read, because we do, well, we might need some information. So we'll duplicate a lot of these. Groups history, groups. All right. Maybe even channels join, channels history, sure. History, groups, we read groups, we read channels, we can write. And then this one does not have a chat write customize, it looks like. Cool. So that sounds good enough for our scopes. Again, if there's something that we are missing based on the implementation, we can always come back here. So we have our tokens we can install to workspace. So let's go ahead and do that. Previously, that was grayed out. Now it's not. So see, it's based on our scopes when we install, when anybody, if this were a public app as well, when anybody would install this, it would tell them exactly what our app has access to do. So keeping things nice and secure. It can do stuff, it can send messages on our behalf. We might decide that it sends the stand-up updates as a person, or it can just send it as the bot. But we have that flexibility there. So we can allow. And it is installed, install app. It's installed, we can reinstall it. We have some other token other tokens. Um, we will not add the tokens yet. We will do that as we build out our app. Last thing is the app home. We know we're gonna have the app home. So we need a home tab. It's gonna messages tab, about tab. Nice. And that is it for the initial configuration of our Slack app. In the next section, we'll generate some code. So we'll build more prompts for ChatGPT and keep fleshing out our Slack bot. Before we dive into generating the code, let's add one more setting to our Slack app. So we're gonna get back into your Slack configuration settings within api.slack.com. Pause here, pull that up if you haven't already. And we are going to add event subscriptions. So previously, we didn't add event subscriptions in the 
previous section, but it's going to enable us to understand when someone in our Slack app does something, particularly since we know from our project planning that we want to have users interact with the app home. We'll get to, we'll be able to know when the app home is open. So just enable this based on your chat GPT outputs. You may have already been prompted to enable it, but going into this next section, just so everyone is on the same playing field, has all the same settings, we're going to enable it together now. And we're also going to subscribe to some bot events. So app home opened is already kind of added here. If you don't have that, just make sure you search for app home opened. And then you can add that. And then we do not need any, at this time, events on behalf of users. As we go along, if we hadn't enabled this and ultimately run into snags, that would have been totally, completely fine. We could have iterated with ChatGPT, but just so we're all starting at the same starting point, we're going to do that now. So make sure you have App Home opened, make sure you enable events, and you save those changes. And then... Also, just for OAuth and permissions to make sure that we're all on the same uh, playing field, make sure that the scopes that you have, we're going to have the scopes for history, channels join, read, write, all of these will also be made available. So make sure you check that um, in the supplementary resources, just so we're all starting from the same starting point. We'll have customize and then we'll have the groups history, read, write. Same with user token scopes. We're going to have history, read, write, history, read, write for channels and for groups. And if you did end up changing scopes, don't forget to reinstall your app to the workspace. So you can go to install app here and then click reinstall to workspace. Just so any new permissions are there and we are good, good, good to go on that end. So now that we've done that, there are a few other tabs that you'll want to have open. So make sure that you, again, have this configuration settings tab open as we build the application. If we need to change our scopes, if we need to change any of our settings, it's going to be helpful to have our app settings up. We're also going to have ChatGPT open. 3.5 is what we're using for this course. So the basic free version is more than enough. Replit, have your replit in the previous section. We had added our tokens and, you know, had our Node.js replit, but make sure you have that. And then the project two plan notes, something that we may reference. So have that open as well. And then have your Slack workspace open. You want to make sure you have that open because we're actually going to test some messages. And so to actually verify that our functionality works, we want to have, we want to have this open here. So our first task is to set up our Slack apps foundation. We'll do this by initializing our app using the Bolt JavaScript SDK, and we'll share the technical considerations that we identified in our planning portion of this project. So let's begin writing our prompt. We'll start with some general instructions. Then we are just going to pop in these technical considerations that we identified from the project planning portion of this course. So I'm going to just do a little technical considerations here. And we are going to go into our little notes that we wrote. Just you know, simple, simple notes, keeping context that we can share later. And we're going to send this and see what generates. Giving us a basic setup. 
We have Chrome, we have Create Event Adapter, we have the Bot Token and the App Token. Web Client, that's probably going to be interesting and useful for some things. We also have the Slack Signing Secret. And then all of the actions. So giving us Slack events. So for the event subscriptions, the events adapter is interesting. We're just going to keep. So let's, let's copy this code. I know I need to take a couple of other environment variables. But let's, let's copy this code and let's go to our index.js. We are really going to take everything here step by step. So all of this other scaffolding with like the Slack events API, um, we are going to kind of build our project function by function. And so I'm actually going to remove those pieces. So the messages, subscribing to messages, scheduling daily reminders, handling errors, we're going to remove that. And instead, kind of start with a more bare bones piece, even this like events adapter. We'll take that out. And why not? We'll also take out the web client. So it's really just initializing the app and like starting it. We'll keep no cron because I know very well, we'll use that. But we'll have a pretty, pretty bare bones app here. So. We previously had a Slack app token, but we did not add a Slack bot token to our environment variable. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go into our Slack API, um, go to basic information. You have app level tokens here, verification, secrets, and then Basically, where we install the app, we see this bot user auth token. It's also in the OAuth and permission section. So whichever tab you want to do this from, we're just going to copy this token. So bot user auth token. We want to copy our bot token. And then we shall go into our replet, go to secrets. We'll add another secret. Make sure that we use the same thing that it gave us. So pour a secret in there, add our secret. Our secret is in there and we're going to go. Cool. Let us start it. Let's run it. So we, if all has gone fine with kind of initializing this app, we also have a missing, see this red here? Format. So if we try to save, it would give us a sorry formatting the way that I copied this. I did not put the end here. So make sure, make sure when you are kind of removing sections that you do pay attention to the formatting. So we want to start the server. They put the app messages in here. We don't actually need that. And they also put cron schedule. So quite a few things are in here, but we will take some of that out. So we don't need the cron schedule and we don't need this app message. Now when we save, it should be hunky dory good to go. So let's try it out. Let's run this. Nice. So we have in our console, this bolt app is running message. Another thing to keep in mind as well is that we have these things, these external packages. So with Replit, it will install internal external packages that are imported here. But typically in development environments, you're actually going to have to install them one by one. 
or Applet also has a place to install packages here. So you can see that, you know, Slack, Bolt, even Slack, Web API and Node Cron, they're already kind of installed in our system. In a file, you'll need to have these here. But if we wanted to install, you just add, like if Express, for example, if we wanted to install that, we could just add that there. But it is not required at this moment in time. When we run it, it will install. And then we can even talk a little bit about the console because we have this statement here called console log. Console log is a function in JavaScript commonly used for debugging purposes. It outputs messages or variables to the browser console, which is this right here. And, or if you're kind of in a more node environment, it might be the console um, of the node environment. And it's very common development tool debugging method as you're building functionality to console different parts to confirm that it's working. So here we have this message app is starting. We have everything needed to even start our Slack app and we get this bull app is running. Great, all looks good. So now onto our next prompt. We'll want to find all the public and private channels the Slack bot is a member of. These will be the channels that get the initial prompt to send a standup. So let's go back here and let's do this. So let's just take everything function by function. And we're going to give the function a name here. So find bot channels instead of having it invent a name. And then we're going to explain the created code. The given instructions. And so here, because it did kind of give us a ton of extra stuff, part of it too is um, we didn't, our, our technical considerations are pretty high level. They're not super granular of the exact approach we want to use to build our application. And so our AI has made some assumptions, but here we're just going to feed it back the very pared down version of the code that we created. So, so let's create a function. Only want the necessary code. like code, and then we'll say code to update. Those are like the given instructions. All right, so we've got our Slack bot token, our Slack app token. We have our function to find all of the private, public and private channels that the bot is a member of. I see that there's this channel is member. Slack bot token, again, we have our client. And then it gave us the mechanism to log the channels. So we've got our function, app client, that's the method, error handling, it did that for us, and it also logged. So this is looking pretty good. So we're gonna copy this, and we are going to put it, update our stock up here. So we have it running. I have not yet added my Slack bot to any channels. So if I were to run this, there would likely not be anything bought as a member of channels. Let's see. Bot is a member of channels, no channels because I haven't added it. So I'm gonna add it to a channel. Um, in my workspace, I will do add it to this I will add it to this OS channel. You can just choose whatever channel to add um, an integration. You'll go to integrations. 
You'll get an add apps. And then you should see your NCMBA daily stand up app here. And then we can add it. Cool. Now it is added. It is only in the OS channel. This is good though, because it gave us no, when we ran it previously, it gave us no channels that it was a part of. So at least, and even though I do have channels on my workspace, so it's um, at least not giving us all the channels. It's something that you want to watch for. Other versions of this code may not actually be specific enough to just the, the few channels. So now that we added to it, it to some channels, let's uh, stop this and rerun. Rerun, see what we get. Oh, nice. Now it's a member of a channel. So this function seems to work well for us. The find bot channels, because we're going to find all the channels and then we're going to post our message. So now let's work on the, po the prompt for posting the message. So we're also going to give it a name. So we're going to go here and we're going to say add a function post reminder messages that fulfills the following requirements and use. Again, we're going to invoke that node cron. We know that based on our earlier planning and research that we need an external scheduling system. And so we want to set up our node cron to schedule this message to go to the right channels independent of our, you know, Slack APIs. So I'm going to say use node cron to schedule that function 5 p.m. Fulfills the requirements. Okay. Fulfills the requirements. And here, in the previous landing page project, you know, every single thing was more spec'd out. Here we had a more high level project plan. And now kind of like as we're building, we're feeding it more detailed requirements, which Personally, in practice, when I'm using AI to code, that's more of how I go for the approach, like high level, jot down some notes. And then as I'm kind of building and refining, if I need to tweak some things, as I'm kind of seeing how it evolves, I'm feeding it with more detailed requirements. So here we're going to define a little bit more what exactly this function should do. So we said it's it's going to post reminder messages. For me, it's going to be 5 p.m. Eastern time zone. I want to post it. You can choose whatever time zone, hopefully one that's more relevant to you than Eastern time zone if Eastern is not relevant. Or you can do like the America, New York, if you don't, whatever. And then I'm just going to put um, some little requirements here of what I want this function to do. Um, make sure I say requirements. Okay, we're gonna post a message to all channels returned by the find bot channels function. So our earlier function where we're finding all the channels that the bot is a part of, we wanna post a message to all those channels because our implementation is relatively simple here for people to use the bot, they're just gonna add the bot it's going to post the same time for everybody on the team and do the reminders that way. And then we'll say what the messages should say. Message contents should include a reminder to head to the app home. Home to fill out the standup. So here, you can do something fancier, but we're also going to make it very straightforward. It's just going to be message contents, head to the app home to fill out the standup. Okay, so I think this is pretty good here. Let's send it out and see what it gives. So here's the updated code. See, in this case, we didn't, since we kind of prompted it earlier with 
what the, the code structure is, and it's pretty small at this point, we didn't even have to update the code or feed it the code. If it did give us a lot of random stuff, um, then I might edit the original prompt and add in more, more code. But building with AI, it's a dance, seeing the output, tweaking how you give it instructions. Um, so cool. So we have several things here. We've got node cron, we have our find bot channels, we have post reminders to channels. So first it's gonna find the channels. Give us a nice message, don't forget to fill out the stand up. And then it's giving us some console logs and an error if there's an error. And here we're gonna have it post every day. It gave us the time zone. So this is looking pretty good, we can kind of See what it tells us back to us. Give us time zone, scheduling, find bot channels. Didn't give us any extra. So we can copy this code and update our Slack bot. Okay. Looks like it gives us military time. And let's see. So let's try it out. Let's try it out. Here should look pretty similar to this. I'm gonna modify the time right now so that I can actually see if it like schedules. So for me, I'm gonna make this, yeah, and let's run it. So modify it to a relevant time for you. And if it runs when it's supposed to, then we'll get that lovely, uh, Message posted, reminder messages posted successfully. So we'll just wait for the time to elapse here. We'll wait for the time to elapse. All right, we get a reminder message posted successfully. And let's go to our channel. Yay, don't forget to fill out the stand up. Head to the app home to get started. We could make this, you know, more interesting, add like a link to the app home, but like I said, we're just gonna keep it simple, go through the mechanics of kind of how you work with AI to build some of these technologies. So that actually worked out. So don't forget to fill out the standup, that worked out. Yeah, onwards to the next part. We'll start with kind of configuring our app home. So right now, all we've done is initialized our app and created a message to remind people. But we also want people to be able to, you know, input standup, so. Let's go here and don't forget to change it back. So I just changed it temporarily to confirm that this kind of works as expected, but don't forget to change it back. All right, onwards to the next part. We'll start with the app home, which we enabled, and we want to basically design our, our app home. So let's go ahead and build up this prompt. So basic, same, same structure of our, as a lot of our previous prompts, you know, we're going to just give it requirements for this particular section, some just notes on what we want this function to do. And then we want ChatGPT to explain to us what it's doing and what that code that they it generated. We'll actually kind of do some parallelism here. Generated code what that means. So let's give it some just loose requirements. Okay. So when the app home is opened, the user should see a view. If we remember kind of, you know, app homes are that home page of the application of our, our of our Slack app. You can message app homes, you can, you know, fill things out at app homes. This is where we're going to have folks submit their stand-up. So we want them to see a view and then the kind of like view should contain a message saying, hi, welcome to the daily stand-up. So simple message. 
Hi, welcome to the daily standup. Feel free to, if you want to put something more creative, you can absolutely change that message. And then, and a button with begin standup that when clicked will open a modal. So begin standup. Welcome to the daily standup. Have a button that says begin standup that when clicked will open a modal. All right. So let's push this out here. See what kind of output we get. All right, so we have something new. So we have, in addition, we have this app event, app home opened. So this is really interesting because previously, and that's why sometimes it's helpful to just focus on the task at hand because ChatGPT will give you, in some cases, some just like extra, extra sauce, extra, extra stuff. And if you have that in there, it may not necessarily be very necessary. When we first asked for kind of to initialize the Slack app and give us the basic setup, it gave us a lot of extra stuff with this like event adapter and this web client. So far, we haven't really needed to use those things and our app works. So very, when you're giving it functions to do, it might give you extra stuff and Sometimes even a really good way to clue, a little clue on, oh, maybe this is not really super necessary, is that extra may not be mentioned or it may be mentioned for something different. Like, oh, it says you need the events adapter for app mention, but we're not even using app mention. So yeah, all to say, take things step by step and be very wary of any extra code that doesn't seem to, you don't you can't understand the purpose. It's also something that we can ask um, ChatGPT about as well. So if we wanted to say like, why is this here? Anywho, this, uh, we've got client views published. That looks cool. Now we've got this block SDK format um, or block kit format, this markdown. So we may, maybe in the next one, we may need to pull up documentation to verify, but we've got this begin stand up button click here. So let's, let's go ahead. Everything looks interesting. This has the user ID associated with the event. Why do we need that at this stage? Uh, we may not. So that's another thing that I'm kind of like, oh, red herring. Like, what does this, what does this have to do? And it's not mentioned in our app home view. It's not mentioned in our explanation. So anywho, we can just copy this here. And depending on the output that you get, you may uh, sometimes chat GPT will just kind of overwrite anything that's done. So really the only thing that you need to worry about here is the app.event, app home mention. So if it has changed previous portions of the code. Don't worry, just use the app home mentioned. Um, copy that piece. You don't have to copy the whole piece. Mine's uh, right at this moment, it's keeping things pretty consistent. So I'm copying the whole piece. All right. All right. All right. So we have this, we copied it. We have our reminder messages, Slack bot token. Let's see. It gave us the home tab, so that's extra. One thing that um, you should also kind of keep an eye on, a clue on things in the code that aren't actually necessary is this, it's declared, but its value is never read kind of warning and won't necessarily stop your app from compiling and working. But what this means is that this variable that's included is never actually used. So I'm going to delete it. So if you have home tab, 
you can delete it because it doesn't seem like it's necessary. All right. And let's stop it and let's run it. See what's here. And we can go to our app home. We got our bull app is running. Let's go to the app home. Hi, welcome to the daily stand up. Okay. We got begin stand up. Very simple view, but the view is there. Let's look at our logs here. And then it's giving us kind of all the information to indicate that yes, this view was published. So we've got the team ID, we've got app ID. This is really interesting because later on, especially that it's logging for us, if we wanted to see, hmm, is there some information that we want to put into our form that to personalize it further? Maybe we want to put the team ID. Maybe we want to put some, you know, private metadata. This kind of gives us some information to look at to see what what's published. So it's really nice that it put the console log statements for us. I find that to be something that ChatGPT does do often. But Looks like our app home open is working. Next, we can actually work on the modal because right now, if we do begin setup, let's see what it does. Begin stand up, it does nothing. It gives us an error because we haven't really defined that piece. If we look at our, yeah, and it just doesn't do anything. The, our action, our begin stand up button clicked isn't really isn't really doing much. And it's giving us some nice like error handling too, which is good. So let's work on our modal for our next kind of step here. So let's create our modal. So create a scrum. Mm -hmm. Or we'll say update the code to include the following requirements. Uh, yeah. Explain the created code. It fulfills the yes. So we're going to do requirements here. And we'll go on to the next piece. So really, you know, after what do we want to happen? Um, after the button click, we want to open up a modal that includes the form where people can submit their stand up. So we're just going to explain that. So after the, you know, begin stand up button click, we could also use this action ID. Sounds like maybe that might be the, the trigger, but you know, we'll just do plain English for now. We'll add a modal that includes the following. Yeah. Following. Uh, that includes, we'll say, we'll just jump in, includes a form with the following inputs. Lots of following here. And the inputs will be like, you know, what did you do yesterday? Um, I'll say like fields and inputs. What did you do yesterday with an input for the answer? Okay. What will you do today? with an input for an answer. What do you need help with, with an input for the answer? And then finally, we need like a button for submitting the answers. Okay. And so we're just gonna add a little bit of a modal and we'll see how it does this code. It might, yeah, let's, let's just do this without even feeding it with any of the contacts from previously and see how it runs. 
Bone click. Um, yeah. After the begin stand and bone click, add a modal. What do you do? Button for submitting the answers. We got all this. Let's see what it gives us. Let's see what it gives us. So we have a new action here, a view submit action. So it's really giving us all of the code. This might be a bit big. Let's see. After the user begins the, the begin stand up button click action, listen is triggered. So let's see, let's see, let's see. So this action happens and then it triggers this view which opens. Daily stand up, yesterday input, yesterday input, what will you do today, today input element help input and then submit plain text submit modal opened results and then we have we we're getting the values here handling the form submission from the modal await acknowledge and it's consoling all of the inputs for us all the submitted values for us so another really interesting thing here, because we've got this home tab again, and this view submit action, it is giving us everything that we've, it's kind of tacking on, on the code here. So we could copy at the stage just because it may not always do. I'm just going to copy the relevant pieces. So we've got view and app home is opened. I'm just going to take this action here. Action. We didn't really ask it to do all of the handling of the form submission. That's kind of like the next piece. And I'm actually going to, oh, it's, it's, it's doing a ton. It's like sending a confirmation message. So it's giving, giving a lot of extra credit. So I'm just going to leave that out actually. So we're just going to take take it step by step here and only use the pieces on beginning the stand up button click. So because we have something else in mind. Have a callback ID. And then we're leaving out this, you know, view submit action even if we looked for it. View submit action. Even in this code, we see that it's only you imported once. Imported, never used. So it's giving us some extra that we don't need. So we want to be cognizant about that. Again, one of those clues that it is extra is view submit action is not even mentioned in the explanation. So this is something that depending on the model that you're using, like more advanced models, are more strict to what you've actually told it to do. Less advanced models, earlier models, free models, they might, you might have to be a bit more diligent, but it's good to see some of this in the wild. So let's try it out. Let's try it out. You know, we have this modal. Let's see if our modal um, kind of shows and if we can submit things. So our Bolt app is running, you know, we'll kind of re get in here, All right? Getting our stand up. Let's see. Are we still getting our notes? Cool. It's kind of acknowledging that we are in here. Begin stand up. Nice. We have a daily stand up modal. What did you do yesterday? What will you do today? What do you need help with? So it seems like our modal has come in there. If we, kind of filled it out since we did remove the acknowledging the stand-up modal at this page, uh, this stage, we, um, filling it out won't do much of anything. So let's go ahead and make that next action, which is we when we fill it out, what we want to happen is we fill it out and then we want it to post a message to every channel that has the user and the bot. So, any channel that has standup bot and the user is a member of, we want it to post the standup updates. So it's a very kind of simplified standup architecture here. So let's go ahead and 
do that. All right. So we have some kind of notes here from when it did give us some extra. It looks like we're going to use maybe the stand-up modal that's mentioned up earlier in this callback ID, callback ID, stand-up modal, um, to do what we need to do to be able to get the, the values. But let's, let's, um, put this in there. And since we did at this stage kind of deviate from what it wants to do with the stand-up modal, I'm actually going to feed it with some of the, the code that we have so far, far. So I'm just going to say update the code to fulfill. And this way, it'll also kind of reinforce the context of all that we already did around finding bot channels, because I think there, um, there's likely going to be some cross with that. We already, we already know all the channels that the bot has been added to. Then we just need to confirm as well that, oh, this user is also part of, part of this. If the user is not part of it at all, then their standup won't be submitted really anywhere. So. So we'll say update the code. Let's generate our prompt here. Update the code to fulfill the following requirements. Explain the created code and how it fulfills the given instructions are just kind of given requirements. We'll use the same language. Just the same kind of prompt section here. And so, yeah, requirements. Do, do, do. Okay. So we'll have like when the user submits answers from the modal from the, and we can even use the name that it kind of called it. So from the standup modal from, yeah, standup modal. So whatever the callback ID is, Make sure you add that. If you don't have a callback ID, then just say modal and then the code should kind of update itself. User submits answers from the modal, um, uh, like post the answers to every channel that includes the user who submitted the standup. and um, includes the Slack bot. Okay, and then, you know, some little pieces around the messages. So the message should include the user's Slack name and the answers to the standup input. And we'll say just say and the and the standup inputs. Nice. And like I said, I'm gonna feed it with the code, especially when you've decided to kind of like deviate from the context that it's generated. It can be helpful to just say, especially with small sections like this script here is relatively small enough for us to just kind of put it in here. So now it has the context of kind of what exactly. And I'll make this more specific and say code to update. Okay. And then we're going to send it off and see what we get. So it keeps on giving us the view submit action, even though we don't need it, but we are the human. So we can choose to ignore that. You know, it keeps the fine bot channels, post reminders, schedule. We've got the app home. We can stand a button click. Do, 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 do. It's long, so it is giving us continue generating here. It uses our fine bot channels, so it kind of got that context without us having to say specifically. And if it started inventing some new mechanism, I could go kind of up here and say, in our requirements, I could edit it and add like use the fine bot channels. So we could refine that, but it it did that in this case. Members away, we got Slack ID. You know, members include this. 
bot user ID. So we have this bot user ID. That's a new process M. So we can talk about it. So everything looks good and it didn't actually use this like process and bot user ID. So we can ask it about it. Oh, let's actually do the continue generating so it can give us the full explanation. And give us a full, full, full code here. But now if you see anything that is like a different another piece and you're not sure why. Um, so I'll say something simple as like explain the purpose of the blow line of code and why um, the bot user ID is necessary. And then we're just gonna ask ChatGPT to give us a little bit of context of why is this even in here? Numbers. Okay, then, you know, the bot user ID, we can ask like, where can I find the bot user ID? Or, so they say it's, it's filters. So let's see. Part of the code checks so the user submitted as a member of the current channel. So this, and then this part of the code checks so the bot is a member of the current channel. So it's actually seems a bit dupe, like a bit of duplication here because we already have the find all bot channels. So it's asking for the bot user ID to find out if someone's a member, but we already found out if people are members with the find all bot channels. Um, so I can say something like, you know, update my original code here and update my original prompt here with the requirements and add instead a requirement to update user Slack and the names. And, and then I'll say, hey, like use, use find all bot channels to So you can say like use, I think it's, I think we called it find all bot channels. Let's just look, use find bot channels to find, yeah. So it's kind of giving us extra, an extra unnecessary step. So another great piece around really checking out the explanation and kind of having that check of like, does that implementation make sense? We already found all the channels that the bot is a member of. So why are we also checking again for the bot to be a member? So use uh, find bot channels to find okay, all the channels. Channels the Slack bot is a member of and filter that list to all the channels that also include the member. So an example here of how we can kind of modify, modify the, what we're giving it get another output, regenerate, be very suspicious of like new, new things. Like, why do we need the user ID? Why do we need that? Why do we need this? So, so I'll let that generate.
All right, so now we've kind of regenerated it here. Let's see, let's see the updates now that we've made some changes to the prompt. All right, still giving us our home tab view submit action because <laughs> find bot channels, post reminders, app home. We've got our app home code. We've got our begin stand up button click code. Um, modal opened, and then we have our stand up modal. User ID, client info wants to find the bot channels that's using the bot token. And so now we don't have this user ID, the members approach. We don't have that members approach. And then we have this mega user. So let us kind of grab this section here and then we can put it all in to our handle form submission from modal. So we'll just use the stand up modal code here or whatever callback ID that chat GPT for your particular implementation. And that's going to go after this begin stand up button click. And we're just going to paste that section right over here and see, see how it goes. We've got states, we've got things, we might need some more permissions, but let's, let's see how all this goes. So we're gonna take, stop this, we're gonna run it. I'm gonna, our bolt app is still running. We're gonna kind of refresh here, go to our daily standup. I'm gonna begin our standup. And I'm gonna say, what did I do yesterday? had some fun working. <laughs> what will I do today? Build a Slack bot. Nothing much. Okay. So we shall submit. All right. So it's giving us multiple things here. We've got a little confirmation message. This is a nice touch that our meds, our setup has been submitted successfully. Um, something that we didn't explicitly ask for likely that your potential output didn't necessarily ask for that either. But another another something extra that it gave us. We also can continue generating to see like what exactly it is doing. So it's getting user information, it's posting answers to channel, it's giving us our confirmation message. And then I see in our OS channel, Demo submitted standup. So for my, this particular account, because it's an account that I use for demos and tutorials, it's not my actual LunchPail account. Uh, my username is called demo. So that's why it says demo, but it's nice. That gives us a little megaphone. Some told us yesterday, told us today what's happening, told us for help what's happening. Begin standup. And this is generating here, gives the confirmation message, but it seems to be working. Let's look at, you know, we've got views here, modal opened. If we were to submit this application, we would remove, typically it's really good practice to remove any console log statements because you don't want just clogging up the console log. Um, but this is our completed script. It does what it needs to do. We have scheduled messages. They will run. Since we're on socket mode, we don't have to sort of set up an external receiver. And since this is also on Replit, if we really wanted this to be a live app, we would host on Replit. Do that. Deploy, choose an account, publish. But we use Node Cron. We edited with our AI removed any of the extra that it was giving us, worked on views. In this case, we didn't have to re-reference a lot of the documentation, the pre-reading of the documentation and pre-getting the right context of the documentation helped us out. 
we can move on to our next prompt and it'll just give us some ideas like to consider the prompt. Like I said, for this, there's not a ton, especially on our small scale for this kind of tutorial application. There's not a ton that we need to do for refactoring. We could obviously do some things, but just kind of as you build, especially with more complex applications, this final prompt can give you some ideas of ways to make things more streamlined, maintainable, make sure your, your code is efficient, especially as real in production apps grow. So consider the provided code, what improvements, improvements can be made for readability, maintainability, and performance. What should I consider? So here we have kind of similar to our landing page prompt. We have, you know, consider the providing code, what improvements can be made for readability, maintainability, and performance. So here we have this consider the provided code, what improvements can be made for readability, maintainability, and performance? What should I consider as the app grows in usage? And then we can just paste our code in here. Paste our code in here. So we'll just give it the whole, whole enchilada, whole 200 lines, which, you know, I find especially earlier models of ChatGPT typically work best with kind of more defined, smaller snippets. But here we are. Here we are. And let's fire it off and see what some of those suggestions are. Just to get an idea, we may not necessarily implement any of these. So so we have some promote separation of of concerns. Let's see. So break down the code. Our code is still relatively small, so we could separate the logic for reminders and views. So have like a messaging file and a views file that's a, you know, if we were doing something a little bit more involved in advance definitely a good way to look at that. You know, make the error handling a bit more consistent. Have a, we already do have environment variables, so it doesn't live in the context of our replet, so it doesn't know that. Implement more logging, which in this case, Console logs, that's great. It's only really useful when you're testing, but in for like production apps, you can have logging to like a actual like platform so that when you're looking at your Slack app and your Slack apps usage, you can kind of see log, log some of those to see what the activity is going on and sometimes even diagnose errors before someone comes to you to diagnose those errors. So batch calls, code structure. So all, all some kind of good suggestions that we can keep in mind as we, if, if we were to like grow and expand this, this Slack application. But for now, this Slack bot does everything that we really wanted it to do. So you just build your first Slack app. So give yourself a little hoorah and we can move on to the next section. And that wraps up our lesson on building a daily stand-up Slack bot. So in this section, we delved into reading API documentation, utilizing external packages, and crafting advanced prompts to build our Slack app. So on to the next adventure. This is project two. We're going to head into our next project where we will kick it up a notch and build even more advanced technology and software with the help of AI. Hey, this is Seth. I'm the founder of No Code MBA. If you've made it this far, you're going to love all of the courses we have, our No Code MBAs 
full platform where you can learn even more from Lola, including the next project in this course, which is how to build a Chrome extension 100% with AI. Check the link in the description to go to that course, plus see all of the other courses available on No Code MBA. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get even more content like this in the future.